what was intriguing about his life back then or something? Yeah. Just like his inner struggle, because it's, you think about like when he was a president, I mean, Lincoln's like one of those guys who had all kinds of battles like through his whole life, you know, like so in the beginning it was like battling with poverty. And then my section is like he has a battle with, it's like an internal struggle, you know? Um, he's battling himself and his depression and everything. Uh, and then, and then later on, it's you know, he, of course, he battles everything else. Like the, you know, he's like trying to keep the nation together. So it's like a struggle for his own fate instead of the story that everybody knows later on. That's like the struggle of like the the uh, state of our country, you know. But it started with the duel. Yeah. You know, that was the original story I was gonna be, I was gonna tell that I was interested in telling. Really? What What was it that appealed to you about the duel that you wanted? It's just to tell? an interesting story. You know, it's like something. You, it's not, it wasn't that well known. Um, and that was, I think that was intriguing to turn that into a comic. So it was that story originally that when I was doing research for that, um, I came across like all the other information about Lincoln, like what was going on in his life around that time, you know, like, and what kind of a person he was at that time. And, and that was even more intriguing to me than the duel actually. So, <laughs> so I did step back and then I still wanted to put the duel in there in the end, so that's what I did. But you put a lot of attention to Joshua Feet. I guess I'm curious what, what appealed to you about their friendship. I don't know. <laughs> that's a hard question, man. I don't know. Like, I guess it's, I mean, I think that their friendship is pretty well known and pretty well documented. There's no way I could get away with not focusing on it because, I mean, that's the same relationship that people speculate was homosexual, you know? Yeah. So... I don't know. I just had to put it in there as part of the story, and I guess uh, when you're when you're battling with depression, it you got to have a friend like that, you know. Yeah. And I think that Joshua Speed definitely helped him out. So I mean, that was just part of the story that I had to focus on. And then in terms, of the one thing that I was interesting in the uh, the treatment of mental illness, yeah. you know, at the time was basically like. Let's make your body suffer. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. You won't notice your body. They said they suffering. give him mercury so that he forgets about his mental anguish and it focuses all the anguish in his mouth instead. Yeah. How insane. It's ridiculous. And bloodletting? Like, what the heck? Yeah. Let's, let's dump you in hot water and then put you in freezing cold water. And I, if, I mean, bloodletting, the hot and cold bath thing, uh -huh. and mercury are all known to kill you. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Blood. That's what I'm saying. Like, why do they... Yeah, he, he really suffered, man. Yeah. How hard was it to kind of distill, you know, like that visit, you know, you're kind of taking this massive visit, there's a huge thing, distilling it down to a... It was hard, man, because I kept on drawing stuff that wasn't important to the story. And so I had, God, I had so many pages that I had to edit out in the book because I would be working on a scene, I would be like four pages into it and realize like, this doesn't work at all for the book, this is not important, why am I doing this, you know? I, I did that a lot, I mean, I wasted a lot of paper. <laughs> And I had a lot of those pages. I mean, I threw away a lot of stuff. I had like a hundred pages that I had drawn that just didn't work. Because uh, originally I started the book a lot earlier. Um, and like, I think it started in like 1832 originally or something. It took a while to like figure out like exactly what was important for the story, you know, and what was too much information. So oh, yeah, it was, that's the tricky part too when you're going through somebody's life. You have to like figure out like, well, I could use that. That could work for what I'm trying to portray. You kept almost all of the politics out of the book. I mean, there's the dual stuff, which you know revolves. You know, there's yeah, that's political, but it's political. But only like I only kind of hint at like what the duel's really about. Right? I mean, I, I tried not to get too into it because that's a whole other book, you know. Yeah. You know, and then there's the slavery thing, but even that is it doesn't get political. It's sort of yeah. you know, philosophical. Right. I'm curious, you know, that must have been a, it must have been kind of a challenging decision of like, oh, I'm going to actually pull all this shit out of here. It was hard, but I mean, I, I could portray a, a story about depression a lot better than I could draw a political book, you know, like I just couldn't do that. I, I mean, it would just be laughable. So, I mean, you have to work with your strengths, I think, and, and that was my strength. It was like the more, <laughs> you know, like, I just couldn't, I don't know, man. Not smart enough for that stuff. That would just take a lot more years of research. What was law like back then? Like, how would people talk in a courtroom? Yeah. You know, all these things. What were politics like? Yeah, I just it would just be laughable if I tried to do that. 
Well, there's, I mean, there's also the like, the universality of a story about depression and love and right. friendship. It is a more interesting story, I think, than, hey, everybody, I made this political book. But, yeah. you know. I discussed the land grants of 1851. Yeah, exactly. Know? And the people that would be interested in reading that kind of book don't read graphic novels. <laughs> like, wouldn't read a graphic novel, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you, you, show, you clearly show that there are these, like, wildly disparate elements. He's got this, like... You know everything is empty, and I, I, you know, I need to die or get better. Uh -huh. You know that that whole the massive depression, yeah. and then you've got him at a party telling the story about taking the soldiers through the gate. You know, and, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's being a sort of like because that's how he was, though. You know, he's a great storyteller. People liked having him around. Yeah, but people would say that he was really funny one moment, and then the next moment he would just be, you know, in, on a couch in fetal position, like quiet. You know, it's just how he was. Like all of the lettering and like the wallpaper, everything was not perfect. Yeah, well, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, but like you know, the the even even the cover of the book, uh -huh. you know, it's it it's and, and I, there was there's one page where um, it's one of the, one of the shots of Lincoln in his law office where I just realized it, it really hit me like oh everything is totally freaking. You were, right. you were yeah, it didn't using, use any rulers or anything. Yeah, and yeah, and that mimics the sort of style that existed in the 1830s. Right. Um, we, you know, if you kind of compare that to like a lot of cartoonists now, we're doing this really highly stylized. Yeah, yeah. But I, but I like looseness, you know, in my yeah. style. And also, if you're going to tell a story that, I think it, you can, you can portray like more, more emotion that way by having like kind of like more human style in your drawing. That's why I thought that. I, I mean, that was one of the big things about me working on this book was like, I knew that I could do it in a different way than anybody else could because any other artist, it, you know, they would have been using a computer font for the lettering and it would have been too slick and they would have done like sepia tone coloring and all this stuff is just like so cliche and, and they would have tried to do something that would just be so lowest common denominator with, with every, you know what I mean? Everything would be just like, Let's try and be so mainstream with this, so we can sell a lot of these Lincoln comics. But that, but I knew that I could do something a lot different, and that was what was appealing about doing the book for me. I mean, even the wallpaper on the cover um, was the bed sheets that I was drawing the the, the book on. You know, like the all the uh, it's like the flowers and stuff. I just took the sheets up when I was working on the cover, and like I had light boxed it in. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Really yeah, like there's all sorts of like little personal details like that. There's people that I know in the background I drew, you know. Yeah. Who, who are some of the people that are I'm like, hidden? You're not, it's, I'm not going to give it away. I'd rather just see if people are going to find themselves. If yeah, people will find themselves. That makes sense. Uh, so roughly how many pages did you draw, do you think? God, I don't know. Over 300. Over 300? Yeah, yeah. And the final book is like one. The final book is not 192, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of amazing. So you you got rid of well over a hundred pages. Over yeah, and of the book. and I mean that also counts pages that I redrew because I had, I redrew a lot of it because in those like few years that I was working on the book, my style was changing a lot as I as I learned how to draw better. So I was constantly having to go back and redraw pages. So I'm yeah I was I was excited as soon as I finished it. I was like oh, I actually did it you know I actually finished the book and, it, and that was the thing like when I was working on it I was so excited to be like working on a on a, on this book like I'm gonna be I'm gonna have a book about Abraham Lincoln that I wrote and drew like how insane is that and that was like pushing me for like the second half of working on the book like I, I would finish like three pages a day sometimes I was just like so excited you know like oh this is so insane this I can't believe this is happening this is so funny what, what were some of the were there were there any like weird things about Lincoln you learned that you were really shocked to learn and do the book I can't remember <laughs> probably <laughs> I just can't remember right now. I guess the, the whole, his treatment for the hypo was kind of shocking when I learned that, you know? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. You read Joshua Wolfshank's book, right? Yeah. When he talks about that, you're like, oh my gosh. I don't know, that was kind of fun. Somewhere right in there is a, I think it's a three or four panel page of a pig, and it zooms in on the pig eating an apple core. Right. And it's just kind of a random shot. Like, it's not connected. Well, it's, uh, it's supposed to emphasize how filthy the city is because as the book gets darker as the story gets darker I wanted to focus on 
what living was like back then, and actually how depressing and filthy it was, and and so like what the conditions were, and that was the point of that page, you know? Yeah. Because it starts to get filthier. That you, you look at the streets and there's more trash. That I draw more trash in the streets and that become more accurate because when he shows up, even when Lincoln shows up in the beginning of the book, his costume is white. You'll notice. And then as it goes, it gets darker, it gets more crosshatched until at the end it's black and his hair is combed over the right, the right side. And the whole point of that was to show, was to actually like literally show him becoming Abraham Lincoln, you know? And I would have had him grow the beard if it was at all historically accurate. <laughs> I was tempted definitely to have him like at least grow some kind of stubble at the end, but couldn't do it. Need to edit all that. <laughs> Good luck. Oh. It's right, intimidating students. Well, oh, turn this thing off. <laughs>